All right, so every one of these lessons, you're reminded of what a rational function is. And so a rational function is going to be the quotient of two polynomials. And so I like to call the numerator polynomial n of x and the denominator d of x. And so we know that there are going to be places where this function is undefined. And you guys just did a paper where you talked about where the function was undefined. If the function is undefined, it's either going to be a hole in the graph or it's going to be a vertical asymptote. Now, I don't think you've ever worked with holes in graphs before, have you? Oh, I think so. So a hole is going to look exactly like this. The function is going to be going along just fine, and then all of a sudden there's an empty space in the graph, and then it just continues going along like nothing happened. Um, the vertical asymptotes, you guys have seen those before from other types of functions like logarithmic functions last year. Um, but the vertical asymptote is going to be a dashed vertical line that the, the graph is going to approach from each side but never quite get to that. Because if you did get to that, it would give you zero in the denominator, which you cannot have. All right, so on that paper you guys just did, where did the factor, where were the factors located that made the function undefined? In the numerator or denominator? Denominator. Denominator is undefined. That's what you're going to look at when you're looking at holes and vertical asymptotes. So what came from the numerator? Zero. Zero. Zero's from the numerator. Holes and vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. All right, so a hole. A hole occurs when the factor in the denominator cancels out with the factor in the numerator. So here's um, a couple of examples of holes. And so when I look at this one, I can see that x minus 1 completely cancels out the factor in the denominator, thus x minus 1. That's going to create a hole in the graph when x is 1. Now the next example is tough. And um, the AP pre-calculus people love to make this kind of difficult for you. Um, so I want you to understand there's a difference between the factor canceling out of the denominator and reducing. And so if I look at this g function, would that x minus 1 completely cancel out of the denominator? The denominator? It would completely cancel out of the denominator. So that, whoops, that is going to make a hole in the graph there. Okay, and that uh, showed you what a hole looks like. Okay, so let's look at the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are going to occur when the denominator and the factor cannot cancel out. It possibly could reduce, but not cancel out. All right, so if I look at this first example, this x minus 1 doesn't cancel out of the denominator. It's in the denominator, which means undefined at 1, and that's going to be a vertical asymptote when x is 1. Okay. And when we look at the next one, does the x minus 1 completely cancel out of the denominator? It doesn't. When it doesn't cancel out, there's some left down there that's going to be a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go back and write some notes about that. Um, whoops. I need to highlight. So it doesn't cancel out of the denominator. That means there's going to be a vertical asymptote. I like to call vertical asymptotes VA, just because it's a lot of letters to write. Right. And if I look back at the other example, the one that was a hole, this x minus 1 completely canceled out. And when that happens, it's going to be a hole. <clears throat> All right, my last class, I went ahead and finished this side. 
uh, and they it looked like their brains were about to explode. So we're gonna hold off on this side and flip to the other side and just do a few examples where all we're doing is identifying the hole and where the hole is located in the vertical asymptote. All right, we're just gonna do the X values of each of these. All right, so when I'm looking for the hole in the graph, we're looking to see if um, what matters is the denominators. So a hole, the, the factor would cancel out with one in the denominator. Does that happen here? Yes. So that means there's going to be a hole whoops, <laughs> when x is negative 3. All right, and then the vertical asymptote is going to be a factor left in the denominator that doesn't completely cancel out, and so that's going to be x equals 5. All right, does that make sense? Because we're about to do one that's a little bit more challenging. Okay, the next one. Okay, right, so the, the possibilities are going to come from the denominator. If the factor completely cancels out from one in the numerator, there's going to be a hole in the graph. So this x minus 2, does it completely cancel out? I think it does. So this one, I should have said that differently. Does it completely cancel out of the denominator? It does. So that means there's a hole there when x is 2. What about the x plus 1? Does it completely cancel out of the denominator? No. So that means there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. And just like when you guys were doing the um, zeros and the undefined, to find vertical asymptotes and holes, we do need our functions to be in factored form. So let's just go ahead real quick and factor this denominator of g by factoring out a common factor. Will x plus 4 factor more? It won't. If it was x minus 4, 100% it would. Um, but the sum of two cubes is not going to factor. So you can just stop. All right, does anything cancel here? There, nothing cancels. So we're going to say there is no hole. All right, and then any factors in the denominator that would give you 0 in the denominator will be vertical asymptotes. So that's going to be for the, the x, that's just going to be x equals 0. Is x squared plus 4 ever going to equal 0? So there's no real number that you can square and add 4 to and ever get 0. So that means that that's not going to create a hole or a vertical asymptote. It does affect what happens with the graph, but it's never going to be give you something that's undefined. So x equals 0 is our only vertical asymptote. All right. Now I do want you to know that you don't have to have a hole or a vertical asymptote on a, on a rational function. You also could have multiple holes and multiple vertical asymptotes on one, so don't be surprised if you see that when you do your assignment. <clears throat> okay, so let's flip over on the, back on the other side, and uh, we're going to talk about one-sided limits. Now, typically, limits with pre-calculus was kind of reserved for either at the very end of the year, we had extra time, or you just learned about limits when you did calculus. So uh, what we're doing next used to only be reserved for calculus, so you're getting a little sneak peek uh, into calculus with these one-sided limits. Uh, it's not difficult to do, it's just it's new and not something we typically did in pre-calculus. So you get to learn a little extra. 
All right, so what I have is a graph. This is the algebraic expression for the graph. And I can see from the graph there as a whole when x is equal to 1. And that's because these factors completely cancel out in the denominator. So the one-sided limit says these things. Where do you think that 3 is coming from? Yeah, that's the y value of the whole. The x value of the whole is 1, which we already knew that. The y value is 3. And you can find that by doing limits. All right, so one-sided limits, you're only approaching from either the left or the right. So this little tiny negative and tiny positive tells you which direction. So the little negative, which side do you think you're coming from? Yeah. And then sometimes you have to do these limits where the hole is and you don't have the graph and you can't use a calculator. So I'm going to show you how to find these values algebraically. So what we're going to do is cancel <clears throat> out the common factor. And plug in 1. Alright, and for the holes, it's fine when you go to do your work. If you just do a regular limit or you just approach 1 from both sides. Because you're always going to, on the whole, you're going to get the same thing on both sides. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit, go back to this function. <clears throat> These x minus 1s, we're going to cancel them out in our head, or you could rewrite it, canceled out, it's up to you. So then what we're going to do is take that 1, this one right here, and I'm going to put it in for both of those x's. So the 2 is still out there, it didn't cancel, and it's going to be 1 plus 2 times 1 plus, or over 1 plus 1. Alright, so what, you're, what we're doing is canceling out the x minus 1 they have in common, and then plugging the, that 1 into the other x's. So what does that give you in the top? In the bottom? So that ends up being 3. That's why both of those are 3. Right? So that's how you find the y value of the whole. You evaluate a limit by plugging whatever the x value is of the whole into it. All right, so we do one-sided limits on vertical asymptotes also. So this is the algebraic <laughs> expression for this graph. And we can tell because the x plus minus 1 doesn't cancel in the denominator, there's a vertical asymptote there. And this one says as x approaches 1 from the left, so we're coming to where x is 1 from the left, it's falling, 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 or approaching negative infinity. And then as x approaches 1 from the right, it's climbing, 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 or approaching positive infinity. All right, now to do these limits, it's totally different. Um, so when there's a vertical asymptote, you're going to create a sign chart. And then test values close to whatever the location of your vertical asymptote is, so in this case it's going to be 1. It obviously changes from problem to problem. Alright, now we can't just pick any number um, that's on the left side. It has to be close. 
So I'm just going to do 0 0.9 and 1.1. Alright, and so we're plugging them into the original function. Um, and so on the top, we're going to do 0 0.9 plus 1, which is a positive. And then on the bottom, we're going to do 0 0.9 minus 1, which is a negative. So that's going to give you negative. So what this means is if there's a vertical asymptote when x is 1, I plug in something close on the left side and I got negative infinity that on the left side of 1 we're approaching negative infinity. All right? And when I plug in 1.1, I'm going to get positive positive. So that means because there's a vertical asymptote of 1 on the right <coughs> side, I got a positive. That means we're approaching positive infinity. Okay, I know that's really weird, kind of confusing. We're going to do a few of these. We're also working on this again tomorrow. Okay, so on this one. We're going to write the left and right hand side, sorry, the left and right limit statement as x approaches 2. So 2 is the only thing we care about on this example for each of the following functions. So I'm going to just going to go ahead and write that. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x. And the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. So to know what to do on these limits, we have to figure out if there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 or if there is a hole at x equals 2. So what do you guys think about A? Vertical asymptote. Nothing cancels, so it can't be a hole. So for the vertical asymptotes, we do the number line. Then I'm going to plug in 1.9 and just see if I get positives or negatives. All right, so I did get a negative there. So that means on the left side of 2, my graph is approaching negative infinity. And we'll do the same thing with 2.1. It's all positives there. So on the right side of 2, the graph is approaching positive infinity. All right, so look at that. See if there's a question you have. It's a lot. It's a lot to learn on a Monday morning. Okay, let's look at B. Okay, all we care about is 2, just, this, just the way this problem is written. Um, so at 2, I notice that I have x minus 2 that will be on the denominator that's completely canceled out from one that's in the numerator. So what is that going to create? A whole. Now, a whole, the limit from the left and right should be the same value, and it's going to be the value of the function if we cancel these out and plug the 2 in here. So I am just, I'm going to keep writing this as a limit because that's the proper way to write it. Um, on, a, on a multiple choice test, 
question. It doesn't matter if you write this perfectly, but I want to train you to do it right. Okay, so what we're doing is we're finding the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. And to find that limit, I can take that 2 and plug it into the reduced version of g. Alright, so that's going to give me 6 over negative 1 or negative 6. That's going to be the answer to each one of those limits. Okay, so you guys look at C and try to decide if 2 is going to have a whole or a vertical asymptote. It's, it's a tricky one. What do y'all think? vertical asymptote because it does reduce but doesn't cancel completely out of the denominator. So that is going to be a vertical asymptote. <clears throat> when we're doing a vertical asymptote, what do we do? Number line, good. Because that x minus 2 in the denominator is being squared, I'm just automatically making it a plus. And then I'll plug in my 1.9. And my 2.1. What questions do you guys have? Yes, sir. So for uh, under the uh, limit of a of x, can we work with the two? Mm -hmm. So is it always going to tell us what number it choose, like x equals two? That's a good question. No. Well, today it is. Um, I made up this other example and I really like it, but we're actually going to hold off and do this one tomorrow because I want you all to work in class so I can walk around and make sure you're okay. Um, so if, like if we were going to do one and it, like if we were going to do these up here, we were going to also find the holes in vertical asymptotes and also do the limit statements, then like for this one, you, you would go negative one left and right. So they're going to, I don't know if I answered your question or not. So sometimes it'll say, yeah, say what happens at two, and then sometimes it'll just say, do the limit statements for the holes in the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so like I said, we are going to skip this one, not because I think you don't need it, just because I, I really want you to, I want to see what you do in class on your own. Um, anyway, so we're going to skip that for now. We'll do it tomorrow. And then go to example four. And I really like this one because it, it's a review of everything we've done. And so the first two are the things we did today. And um, the first one tells us that we know the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x is 5 and from the right. So what is it telling us we have at 3? That's going to be a whole. So if it approaches a number, it is going to be a whole. And I actually know the ordered pair where there's a whole. When x is 3 and y is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and at that point, just go ahead and just draw a little hole. All right, and then it tells us as we approach one from the left, we get negative infinity and one from the right is positive infinity. So what is that telling us? We have at one, that's the vertical asymptote. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a dashed vertical line there. And then we know that f of negative 1 is 0. What is that going to be on the graph? X-intercept or a 0. Good job. And then we know that the limit as x approaches negative infinity and infinity of f of x is going to be 2. So what are we going to have there? Good, a horizontal asymptote. So let's draw that. And we really have, this is everything we need to get a pretty decent graph. We can still plug in some other number. Well, no, we can't. We don't have anything to plug it into. This is all we get. So I do need to be careful that on the left side of negative 1, we're at negative infinity. So we're going to be really, really close to the vertical asymptote on the left side, but below. And then we're going to curve through that um, x-intercept. And then we're going to approach the horizontal asymptote. So that's one branch of your graph. All right, and then I also know that on the right side of one, I'm going to be approaching positive infinity. So I'll start up high on the right side. We're going to go to the hole and then take a little break and then come out the other side. <coughs> so you're never going to have a floating hole. So it should go with the flow of your graph. I know that sounds weird. It's probably not a sentence you ever thought you'd hear, but there's not going to be just that floating hole. All right. So what questions do you guys have? All right. You have about 10 minutes to work, um, and there's only 10 problems. 